Let's see if we can figure out our color season in part 2 of this color analysis series. In part 1, we discussed some basic terms, how this 12 color season wheel is formed, after which we completed 3 steps, where step 1 was to analyze your wardrobe, separate the colors that make you feel happy and confident. Step 2 was all about finding your undertones, where we completed another 6 steps, A to F. And finally, step 3 was all about your contrast. I did get a lot of questions on value and chroma. A lot of you asked me whether we can fall only on one end of the spectrum, light, dark, soft, or bright. And the answer is no, you can fall anywhere in between. And I really apologize. I should have clarified this in part one. And a lot of concerns about undertones. Uh, so many confusing results. It's all over the place. Three warm, three cool, maybe three neutral, three warm, which can only mean two things. Number one, you have olive skin tone, meaning your undertones are neutral, but more inclined towards warm. Or the second case, which is very simple, you have neutral undertones. Only drawback is that you don't have one particular season for your type. But good news is you can wear colors from other color seasons as well. But let's move on to step number four. This step is really important and takes precedence over all the other steps. On your notepad, write down step number four drapes. I want you to take out all the colors that you have available in your wardrobe, including neutral colors such as black, white, beige gray you get the idea and if you can i want you to include multiple shades and intensity of the same color for example for blue i want you to include navy blue muted blue dark blue light blue bright blue even if that means you have to borrow some clothes from your mom your husband your boyfriend your father your best friend anyone that you can find but don't be too hard on yourself will work with whatever you have available now that you have this big pile i want you to separate all the colors blues reds yellow orange neutrals and so on. Next, I want you to remove any makeup that you have on your face and really observe yourself. I don't want to say this, but I want you to focus on your imperfections. And I'm not saying that I'm trying to demotivate you by making you focus on your imperfections. Unfortunately, this is part of the process. If you want to find your color season, you'll have to do this. Don't worry, let me do this first. If I remove makeup, I can clearly see uh, dark circles, especially in the corner of my eyes. I have a lot of hyperpigmentation around my mouth. Uh, some acne scars and I can also see that the corner of my lips are dark. These are the things that I'll really focus on while draping. Uh, if it helps, you can also write them down. Now we want to use some natural lighting for that. You can find a big window on one side, set up your mirror, but in front of you, I want you to set up your phone. I want you to record yourself while you're draping. And please lock the white balance of your device, whether you're using a camera or a phone. Because what happens is once you start changing colors, camera will auto adjust according to that color and increase or decrease the brightness and your results will not be accurate. Now start draping these colors one by one. Record yourself, also observe yourself in the mirror. And hold all these clothes really close to your face and Observe if this is the right color for you or not. How do you do that? Let me tell you. I have this book, Color Me Beautiful. On page 58, it says, the right color will smooth and clarify your complexion, minimizes lines, shadows, and dark circles, brings a healthy color to your face. Your face will pop out, pushing the color in the background. Your face should really pop out and radiate in this color not the other way around. Wrong color may make your complexion look pale or muddy. I call it pasty. Uh, will accentuate lines or shadows around mouth and nose, dark circles under your eyes. Will accentuate blotches, if any. May age your face. Will look too strong or too weak. Color tends to pop out, pushing your face in the background. As soon as I was done with this process of draping, I was really excited to see my results, see the recording, which colors work best for me. But to my surprise, there were a few colors from spring and autumn season that work wonders for my skin. But then there were a few colors from winter and summer season as well. I was so confused. I was so disappointed. I started doing the research again, read this book again. But then I came up with a few shortcuts. That's when I prepared this table. Let me show it to you guys. This is the table that I came up with up here we have all four seasons winter summer autumn and spring and on the left are the colors that you should really pay attention to and neutrals such as white and black will be the backbone of your draping process let me explain this one by one i think this angle is much better let me explain what i have on the board here if uh, pure white and black suits you really brings out your complexion then you are a winter season 
But if soft white suits you the best, black does nothing for you, it makes you look sick and pasty, then that means summer is your season. If oyster white works best for you, then autumn is your season. Again, black does nothing for you. It brings out your fine lines or dark circles. And the last season that we have here is spring. Again, black does nothing for you, doesn't work for spring season, but ivory white looks best on your skin as compared to pure white. Next color on the list is orange. And I think this color is something that can really uh, help you find your color season. For the first two seasons, winter and summer, orange does nothing for you. It makes you look sick, brings out your blemishes, dark circles, makes you look pasty. So this is not your color if you are winter or summer season. But if all shades of orange works best for your skin, then you are an autumn season. And then we have spring, where light shades of oranges work best for your skin. For example, apricot, peach, light rust, corals. Let's move on to the next color, pink. And uh, this is again a really helpful color in analyzing yourself. If you think when you wear magenta and that hot pink, it doesn't wear you, but you are wearing the color, which is very rare, then that means you are a winter season. But if pastel pinks like rose pink, uh, they look best on your body, then that means you are a summer season. No pink colors for autumn, but you can wear peachy yellow pinks if you are a spring season. If you look best in royal icy purples, then winter is your season. But if you look best in muted shades, such as plum and mauve, then summer is your season. If purple brings out all the blemishes, dark circles, the imperfections that we talked about, then autumn is your season because uh, no shade of purple works best for autumn. And then for spring, you have medium violet or blue violet. But keep in mind, even after using this table and these shortcuts, the results might still be very confusing. Have some patience, wear these colors on everyday basis and see what works best for you. Or maybe have your family members, friends observe you on a weekly basis, have them keep a list of colors that looks best on your body and see if your results matches with what they have to say. Because obviously at the end of the day, you are not an expert, I am not an expert. It takes an expert eye to really know what colors works best for you. And in case you're wondering, here are my results from step number four. I started with neutrals first. This is white versus oyster white. Uh, if you look closely at the lines around my mouth, you will notice that oyster white blends these lines, but white highlights them. White drains out my face, but oyster white blends into my skin and brings out a subtle warmth and glow. The difference is very minimal though, but I think oyster white wins. Then I tried comparing oyster white with ivory. I don't know if it was the changing light from window, but ivory makes me look very dull and muted. I don't feel this brings out my features or any glow to my face. Next, I tried camel color, which looked in harmony with my skin, blends in so easily and doesn't look out of place. I think these two are my colors. I'll put white after them if I have to rank and ivory being the last. Then I tried black and oh my god, it looks so bad. You can see my blemishes and hyperpigmentation easily. This is good to know because I love wearing black. Anyway, uh, same thing happened with dark charcoal gray, but light gray is not so bad. Uh, to be honest, I cannot tell the difference, but I think it does make me look sick. I think now you have a good idea on how I judge these colors, so I will not bother you with details, but this is what I did next. Drape every color I could find and it was like falling into the black hole. I was so confused which colors look best or worse, which color is better than the other, spent hours on this one. I guess if you are new to this like I am, you will feel the same pain. But don't give up, try your best. I took some help from my husband and I think it helped a little. But finally, I decided to use the elimination method where I kept one picture and eliminate other two, the ones that I thought were the worst. But one thing was very clear, muted soft colors were making me look pale and sick. And bright colors such as this yellow, they were making my hyperpigmentation pop. And here's the final result. These are the colors that I think look best. But if there's any expert in the audience, do let me know in the comment section if I'm looking at this from a wrong perspective. But looks like these colors are pretty close to the dark autumn color palette. On your notepad, I want you to write down step number five, ranking my characteristics. There are six features in color theory that we already discussed in part one light, dark, warm, cool, bright, and soft. I don't know if I mentioned this in part one, but how warm or cool you are, it's defined by 
hue. So hue decides if you are on the warm side or cool side, if you are neutral or somewhere in between. And if you remember, value defines how light or dark you are. And third is chroma, based on which you can say whether you are soft or bright. We have three characteristics that we need to rank, hue, value, and chroma. Now let me ask you a simple question. What do we mean when we say we are ranking something? That means we are giving one feature more priority than the other. Now, when I say we have to rank hue, value, and chroma, that means we have to give priority to one characteristic more than the other. And the characteristic with highest priority will be your primary feature. On the second, we'll have secondary feature. On the third, we'll have tertiary. But in color theory, when it comes to tertiary characteristic, it's so diluted that we don't really consider it. In short, primary plus secondary will form your color season. Like I mentioned, we have to rank hue, value, and chroma. So your primary characteristic can only be hue, value, or chroma. So you have six options, warm, cool, light, dark, soft, and bright. But your secondary characteristic can only be hue or chroma. Now you're only left with two options, warm, cool, soft or bright. As you can imagine, there will be so many combinations, but keep in mind, one characteristic cannot repeat itself. So it cannot be chroma plus chroma equal to co your color season because soft and bright, that doesn't make any sense. We need to know your hue in order to decide your color season. So hue will always be a part of either primary or secondary characteristic. Now I'll show you a table so that it makes more sense. If you go with the first example, that means your primary characteristic is that you're bright and your secondary is is warm. So you are bright spring. But this table is not the problem. Problem is how do you go on about ranking your characteristics or your feature? Let me explain. I want you to take out your notepad. Under step number five, I want you to draw three horizontal lines. Two and let's name these lines hue, value, and chroma. On the left, you write hue, value, chroma. It looks something like this. Let's also name each end of these three lines. For hue, on the left, we'll have warm. And on the right, we have cool. For value, it will be light and dark. For chroma, you know the drill. It will be soft and bright. Looks something like this. In order to rank your features, I want you to have a look in the mirror again and see what's the first thing that strikes to you about your features. For example, when I look in the mirror, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but when I look in the mirror without makeup, first thing that comes to my mind or first thing that I notice is my black hair, big black eyes, and my black eyebrows. There are high chances that my primary characteristic is dark because I cannot tell right away if I have warm undertone or cool undertones. Even though I have explained all these six features in part one in detail, let me still uh, give you some shortcuts on how you can identify your primary characteristic and how you can tie these results to step number four, which was Draping. Let's talk about hue first. Have a look at these two pictures. On the left here are people with warm undertones. On the right, you have individuals with cool undertones. You can tell the difference right away. So when you look in the mirror and you can tell right away whether you have warm undertones or cool undertones, then that means your primary characteristic is hue. For your reference, I've also combined the eye color, skin color, and hair color from uh, the website, theconceptwardrobe.com, in order for you to determine whether you fall under warm or cool undertones. Light will be your primary characteristic if the first thing that you notice when you look in the mirror are the light features. So your hair, your eye color, your eyebrows are pretty much the same shade. All features are light. And you will notice that dark colors really age you, but light colors make you pop. These are the features, eye, skin, and hair color if you are a light individual. Next characteristic is dark. This can be very confusing. This can mean a few things. Number one, either you have dark features for your ethnicity. Your ethnicity is usually light, but you in particular have dark features. Number two, you have dark features as compared to your skin tone. For example, I have dark hair in comparison to my fair skin. Number three, it can also mean that you have high contrast between your skin color and the white of your eyeballs or your teeth are white than your skin. And this is mostly the case with people of color. And that's why this can be very confusing because there is not much information available for people of color. Let's 
change that scenario. Let's put uh, some more information out there on the internet because it's really frustrating. Now, if you want to tie this with step number four, just know that dark colors, uh, they really work well on your skin. They look good on you, but light colors, they drain you out, makes you look sick, pasty, and pale. In short, if you have light features, light colors will look good on you. If you have dark features, dark colors will look good on you. These are the features, eye color, skin color, hair color, if you are a dark person. Chroma will be your primary characteristic if you can tell right away if you are muted or bright. If you are muted, everything is grayed out, everything is blended, your features are blended, uh, you have all similar features with low intensity. So there's not much of a contrast between your features. These are the features, the eyes, hair, and skin color if you are a soft or muted person. And I'm not going to go in details because I've already discussed this in part one. Again, let's tie this to step number four, saturated colors. They won't look good on you if you're soft or muted, but gray will look good on you and opposite is true if you are bright you have clear saturation with high contrast saturated colors look good on you but muted colors they look very bad on you these are the features the eyes hair and skin color if you are a bright individual now that you know everything in detail you should be able to rank your characteristics for example first thing that you see in the mirror is your dark features then you will have a pointer here on dark so that is like the extreme end that will be your primary characteristic in my case when i was looking carefully at part one of the video looks like i have olive skin tone that's why i was confused because silver doesn't look bad on my skin so i cannot tell right away if i have warm features or cool features but with olive skin it's usually that you have neutral undertones but you are more inclined towards warm so it's not the extreme end but this will be my secondary feature so warm somewhere here i have dark and warm combination is dark and warm what is dark and warm it's autumn my color season is dark autumn so this is how you rank your characteristic and find your color season i will leave all the color dimensions up here on the screen for 12 color seasons so you guys can take a screenshot and refer to it once you start ranking your features even after all these steps please know that results from step four and step five they can clash with one another they can be conflicting in that case always go for drapes no matter what anyone else says uh, yes you have one particular color season that works best for you but you can also borrow colors from other colors seasons best example Priyanka Chopra people keep fighting and they are divided into two one says uh, she is dark autumn the other one says she is dark winter but what they fail to understand is that you can look good in both if you are in that range then there might be a chance that your undertone is different than your overtone I will not go into uh, the details of overtone and undertone but just know that you can borrow colors from your neighboring season Let's compile all the results and see where you lie in this 12 season color wheel. Even if you have your color season from step 5, I still want you to double check your answers with the flowcharts that I'm going to show you next. I want you to go back to the results from step 2 and ask yourself if you have warm undertones. If the answer is yes, go to step 4 and see if soft warm colors look good on you and hide your imperfections to some extent. If the answer is yes, then you are true autumn. But if the answer is no, go back to step 4 and see if bright warm colors look good on you if the answer is yes then you are true spring this way we have covered two seasons true autumn and true spring next if you have cool undertones go to step four and see if crisp icy colors look good on you and hide your imperfections to some extent if the answer is yes then you are true winter but if the answer is no go back to step four again and see if muted icy colors look good on you if the answer is yes then you are true summer and this way we have covered two more seasons true winter and true summer don't worry i have something similar if you got neutral undertones as your answer in step number two in this case go back to step number three and see if you have high contrast or low contrast you are either bright or dark 
if you have high contrast, light or soft if you have low contrast. Let's discuss bright first. Go to step number 5 and see if your primary characteristic is bright. If the answer is yes, go to step number 2 and see if you have more warm undertones or cool undertones. If it's cool, you are bright winter. If the answer is more inclined towards warm undertones, then you are bright spring. Similarly, if your primary characteristic is dark, go to step number 2 and see if you have more warm undertones or cool undertones. If it's cool, you are dark winter. If it's warm, Warm, you are dark autumn and this way we have covered four more seasons bright spring bright winter dark winter and dark autumn now let's say you are a person with neutral undertones but with low contrast this will make you either soft or light let's discuss light first if your primary characteristic is light go to step number two and see if you have more warm undertones or cool undertones if it's cool you are light summer but if the answer is more warm undertones you are a light spring similarly if your primary characteristic is soft go to step number two and see if you have more warm undertones or cool undertones. If it's cool, you are soft summer. If it's warm, you are soft autumn. This way we have covered four more seasons, completing 12 color seasons in total. As you can tell, this is a shortcut method uh, to come to a conclusion what your color season might be, but hopefully the results from uh, this flowchart matches with the results from step four and step five, and hopefully you can come to a conclusion. But in most cases, I think it takes time. You might have to try a few colors and experiment and really see for yourself what works best for you and don't forget please include the colors from step number one colors that make you happy and feel confident in your final color palette and i know i said i will color analyze a few of you in this video but unfortunately the time is limited and i also realized uh, the pictures that you guys sent me they were not enough i also needed a video of all the drapes with you guys without makeup in clear lighting with auto white balance turned off which was like too much to ask for which i think most of you were uncomfortable with so yes that's the reason why i dropped the idea but hopefully in future maybe i can make a video where you guys send me your videos and we'll come to a conclusion i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions do let me know in the comment section and i'll see you guys in my next one